Today, I want to talk about uh, how to configure Microsoft Teams applications um, with Azure App Configuration and Azure Keyword. Quick introduction on myself, uh, who, for those who don't know me, um, Markus Möller, I'm a Microsoft 365 developer expert, and I work for Abernard in Germany, and you can reach me on Twitter or via my blog post. So let's quickly jump into the demo. Uh, first, I want to show you the small Teams messaging extension, uh, which posts a selected file to a message channel, and then we will have a, a look into the Azure resources that are helping us to configure that on an enterprise ready level. We have a quick uh, and simple messaging extension here. And when we kick this off, um, there are several samples uh, also provided, not only by me, but uh, also by me on uh, this or that scenario. And here I do it really, really simple in that case. So um, we retrieve a bunch of files uh, from a specific location. And once we pick one, we can post this to the message channel and we can do further stuff with that. We could also implement it more, but that's not uh, the real important thing for today. The question now is, first, from where do we get these files and how does our application know that? And the second thing, of course, as nearly always in enterprise applications, how do we authorize to access those files or any other kind of resources? So to configure that, uh, Teams messaging extensions provide uh, an option to enable configuration. And once this is enabled, you can reach it via a secondary mouse click on the icon, for instance. And then we click on settings. And once we do that, a custom configuration page gets rendered, which we are responsible for implementing that. In my case, um, I did it uh, with uh, two several options. On the one hand, you can provide a site and a list ID to get a specific uh, library being responsible for serving the files. And the alternative would be to say, hey, we want to go with search and retrieve the files with search instead. And all these things, once we press OK, will be configured in the background, and then the sample can run again. This is all to show here. So how does this look like in, in Azure? In Azure, first, we have uh, the so-called app configuration resource. And this is, uh, let me, uh, this is the alternative for the classic app settings uh, or uh, web.config. Yeah? And uh, the benefits are here, of course, that here a user would be able to write to it. And also, you could share configuration uh, values uh, across several applications. In my case, I'm using the MM Teams Action Config. And here we can quickly run into the Configuration Explorer. And here we see um, that we have a list ID, we have a site ID. We also have a value about how to use search or the search query, which uh, I just showed in the UI. Yeah. Um, of course, as you can also see from here, it would be a better practice to not use that short names, but more to use some kind of a namespace, because here in this case, I'm really sharing uh, the configuration resource for in between different applications. And for this not JS demo, for instance, it's much better to be detected. The second thing is what we uh, are using, of course, is uh, the authentication and the authorization in the background. Um, and therefore, we regularly use things like um, app IDs or application secrets. And those you would not store uh, mainly in a simple Azure app configuration, but here Azure Key Vault is the way to go. And this is here, but slightly the same resource, or at least it looks like. And in this case, we have several options to store. We can store keys, we can store secrets or certificates. In my case, I have some secrets here. In that case, it's uh, two for this uh, two for this uh, application. You know, we have the graph application secret and one secret for the Microsoft App Pass. This is a connection to the bot channel in the background. How does uh, now the app service use that or access it? Yeah, here's my app service where my application is hosted and. Once I click on that, I can first see a quick notation for the keyword. When I go to my classic um, application configuration, 
Here, I give you one example where the Microsoft app password refers to the Microsoft keyboard. I will show you that in a bit better mode. Come on. Here, this is a notation how you can directly access the keyboard from your app service. Yeah, there we note no piece of code for that. Yeah, but I will also show you code uh, when you need code, and I will show you that in a, in two or three minutes. And the last thing I want to quickly give an introduction and explain a bit later is the authentication from this app service to the resources like uh, keyboard and app configuration. And this takes place on behalf of Microsoft uh, Managed Identity. And here you have nothing else to do than on the one hand, click on the Identity tab of the um, service who's consuming something, um, enable the Managed Identity. And once you do that, you have an object inside your Azure Active Directory, which you can then grant access to on the keyboard or on the app configuration file. And this is what you do here in the access control tab. And this is uh, from the demo side. Just a simple wrap up as an architecture, what we are doing. Um, so we have our uh, we have our web application here, which is in fact uh, a whole Teams application. And this one is hosted in our Azure App Service and the configuration takes mainly takes place in the Azure App Configuration resource, and the secrets and credentials are stored inside Azure Key Vault. And last not least, with that, what we can do is we can authenticate and get our data from Microsoft Graph and the whole Microsoft 365 ecosystem. If it's if it's SharePoint, OneDrive, uh, Outlook, whatever we need. So, how does this work now in code? In the opposite, the first thing is how does Teams handle the requests in terms of uh, the configuration. So this is the middleware of my Teams messaging extension. And once I right click on the app icon and request the settings page, which I did here, the on query settings URL, um, this function is called. And in that case, now I retrieve my config and uh, use that config to render uh, the Teams uh, a Teams task module, and this is what I return as an as an URL here. If the task module submits the configuration back to Teams, the on settings function is called, and here then I persist my config. So, how does this then look in detail? So we have uh, put this to a utilities class, and we will go now into the details for that. In the utilities class, we have first a retrieve config function. This first needs to establish a client. Yeah. This client um, is there to grant access to the resource. And once we have the access, we can simply retrieve our values with the get configuration setting and providing a name for that. And then we have an object where the value is uh, the main interest, which we will use in this case here. We use the site ID and the list ID and so on and so forth. Next thing would be how to establish this client. And here I commented out the easy way. Yeah? The easy way would simply be to establish a so-called default Azure credential and together with a connection string, instantiate the app configuration client. And this is the easy way. And behind the scenes, um, this default Azure credential handles the different cases you could have because you can have your uh, app running in Azure, but you can also have it running locally in debug mode or something. And those two options I show here in the code in detail below. Yeah? If I'm running locally, I would have an Azure client secret here in my environment variables, and then I will establish an environment credential. And with that, I get my app configuration client. And in Azure, where I don't have this client secret and client ID corresponding, then I simply get a so-called managed identity credential, nothing else, and establish the same. That's it's as easy as that. So 
a short explanation how this works. Um, to visualize uh, once again, is if you have any kind of resource, you regularly need credentials to access them. And how to store them? You would regularly put this to a credential storage. You do this on your laptop as well with key pass or something similar. And to compare this with your laptop, on your laptop, on your local desktop, you now need a password to access this. Yeah. But is this a solution? Because then we would have a chain and again and again. And to cut off the chain here, we have the managed identity. And the managed identity has no real password because it's taking place inside the same Azure subscription. Um, it's able to authenticate itself against the um, and against the re con uh, resource to consume. So the app configuration store or the key Azure keyword. Last but not least, um, the opposite of get a configuration value, of course, in this case would be the safe uh, configuration value. But yeah, this is uh, quite the same as we have already seen. Yeah, we already have seen uh, how to establish a client. And then we will use the set configuration setting. And here we do not only need the name, but we also need the value to store. That's the only opposite. The rest is the same as already seen. For this was for Azure App Configuration and for Azure Keyword, it's also quite the same. There's only one uh, difference, and it's the client. Yeah. So what's the same? The same is uh, we have to establish a client, and then um, we have to get a value yeah, by providing a name. It's more or less the same, and only the Client is different because this is, is so it's not an app configuration client anymore. In this case, um, it's not a keyboard client. There are different clients for the different resources. In my case, I'm using only it for secrets, so I use the secret client. If I would use certificates or so, there would be a uh, corresponding certi certificate client. But the authentication once again runs uh, quite the same. And here's once again this the short version establishing a default Azure credential and then getting the client. And of course, we also need a connection string for that. This is uh, the, simply the resource URL uh, which you can grab from your Azure resource. So where do I use that in action? I use that in action in my uh, backend service where I'm uh, getting the files. And uh, here I'm getting my files. And first, I retrieve my configuration. And once I have that, I get an access token, I come to that back later, and then I will check if I use search, and then I will use my search query, and then I will kick off a method for that. And the other option would be to provide the whole configuration option to my get files by site method, where in the background, I'm simply constructing a URL from site ID, list ID, blah, 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 what you've seen. Interestingly, uh, to jump there is the exchange for token because when we come to that function, I put it here. Um, this is the on behalf flow um, which I'm running here, and therefore I need my app secret to create my token. And this is what I'm receiving here first, and then I will hand this over to my URL and post it, get my access token on behalf. And with that access token, I can go on and run the methods which you have seen here. Um, get files by search with the access token or that one. One last bonus slide, not really relating to the topic, but as it's quite new and not that uh, much used and documented, is also to show how I retrieve the files by search. This is the following endpoint from Microsoft Graph, the search query endpoint, and in the request body, I provide in my case uh, that I want to have list items, not drive items, because I'm using the metadata. Then I hand over a search query, and I'm asking for several fields to be returned. And last but least, very important in this case, although I retrieve only, I have to post all that stuff against uh, Microsoft Graph. That's it from my side. Um, as always, some resources. Um, this Azure App Configuration sample is documented in a blog post on my site. I also provided this 
as a PMP sample uh, just two or three weeks ago. Um, yeah, I did some updates to that, promised to uh, submit another PR for that. So the search uh, query, for instance, is not in that yet, but I will publish this soon. Takes a while always for me. Um, yeah, then some documentation on Azure app configuration and also how to treat this in Node.js because it is unfortunately not directly linked. Um, Azure key mode documented and then the SSO topic um, described by Victor a while ago. I know he's already working on a yeah, simplification of that. He demonstrated this, I think it was uh, one or two weeks ago. I uh, hope to do this soon and put the pieces together. And last but not least, also a post as a side note from my side on how to use the search with Microsoft Graph. Yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you very much, uh, Marcus. Mm -hmm.